Hello, welcome and good evening to the last episode of Let's Go MS-DOS. Well, last for this season anyway. We will today finish up the game that we started and I think we learned a lot so far. I want to make another season with more advanced topics and I'll probably make a little poll on YouTube where you can tell me what topics interest you. It should be related to MS-DOS obviously, to retro PCs and I don't know all of the stuff but I can certainly read up on things and try to come up with tutorial videos on how to do certain things and it should be short enough that single topics can be like live coded in 15 to 30 minutes so um, we have to break it down into sizable chunks at least but yeah um, please feel free to comment on this and give me some inspiration on what to deal next with Our example topics that I definitely want to cover is uh, something like mouse support which is nice in these pedal based games or even in other games of course um, and the mouse is not that hard to do and of course double buffering to make the animation better soft scrolling maybe um, and its limitations on the PC as well as stuff like sprites maybe even sound and music I never did that properly um, I'll definitely have to read up on that well, that's a very interesting topic as well naturally okay so let's get started with um, this last episode where we'll add the uh, game over screen and the game over condition and first of all we need to define something um, the maximum score that is allowed until over which uh, the players will have one so four is the uh, let's say five is the maximum score that's a nice nice number I think uh, after which the end of the game will be triggered and we also need to clean up a bit here um, I'm gonna pull down the parameters for the video interrupt here so there are two different modes that we uh, support the graphics mode and the text mode and we have one function currently set mode but there's also um, more things that we need um, we want to print the score so we could try the print string function although spoiler alert we won't be able to do that in pure C due to the way the Turbo C handles the registers of the CPU but we will come to that uh, later but instead something that does work that we can do is um, we can just move the cursor on the screen one by one and write the single character um, print character I think that was nine so here's the set cursor position function and here's the right character and attributed cursor position. Those will work. Um, I didn't find a way around this to simply print a string. It works if you use assembler or some better C implementation, but Turbo C in this version will destroy one of the registers and that will not work then. Okay, so these... Uh, three new functions we will implement and also um, for the text printing we need to have usable colors in the first 16 colors because those are the text printing colors of the VGA and EGA cards you can also use higher and better colors in VGA mode but the BIOS functions make it a bit hard so um, I will rename this port here which we call palette index to palette Right, and actually there's a second register here, um, 3C7, where you can tell the VGA card, I, I actually want to read the colors there. And uh, we need that for our palette side effects. Um, so I don't want to reprogram all the nice colors that the VGA has, the ones that you see on screen, the yellow and the blue, but I want to just copy them from the card into my buffer and then write them back when we do the set palette function. Um, alternatively, we could just skip the first 16 colors all the time, but 
Yeah, I think it's nicer if you can fade these things as well with our fading effects, the existing colors. So that's why we need this new port. And we'll make use of it, I think, right now already. Uh, one thing what, that we need to take care of is at the moment we draw the background from um, color 0, but we want to leave the six, first 16 colors undisturbed. And I'll show you what happens if we don't do that. So basically, um, here in the Get Sky palette, we will have the uh, following problem uh, to solve. We need to read out the uh, 16 colors. And we do that. Just quickly check my notes. Okay, so what we'll have to do here is we read out the first 16 colors. So we say i equals 0, i less than 16, plus plus i. And first here I'll put the output of the palette read register and I'll say let's start with palette uh, in index 0 and then we'll say here uh, actually we can just we can just copy this stuff from down here but instead of Defining anything manually, we will just read out the data. So we'll read from palette data port and we'll just do that three times and we will have the data. That's fine. That should work. Um, what else do we need? Oh yes, um, at the moment we would simply overwrite here, so we will shift everything here. We'd say this is from 16 to 116, this here is from 116 to 216, and now at the moment we just filled something here, and actually there's a bug, this should be 63, that's the maximum allowed value, and uh, we only do it like this. But uh, we will fill the rest with a nice red, so we have no uninitialized values, which is, I think, reasonable and better. Oh, no, 217. I less than 256. Plus plus Y. And then setting it. And that's it. Uh, this should already work and compile. No, it doesn't. Oh yeah, because we renamed uh, quite a bit of stuff, so palette write is now the name, because palette index is not quite accurate. This is the index for the writing. Where was the third? Here. And the last error was here. Now we should have something that works, indeed. And there you can already see um, here at the, at the top the original 16 VGA colors, which is quite nice. So now we can use those. We just read them out, but we of course don't want them up there. So we will tweak the draw background routine to just add 16 to the color, and then it should be back to normal. Yes, this looks much nicer, doesn't it? Okay. Now we have the palette up and running. We want to print the score, I think, yeah. And we need some, some kind of print function. We can use printf, but that will scroll the screen, as you saw. And um, in C, you don't have any concept of cursor or text windows. Tobacy put something on top that can do that stuff, but
but it won't work very well in this manually initialized graphics mode. But uh, the BIOS, the, the ROM of the PC, can do that in graphics mode, but we have to program it manually. Uh, similar to how we set manually the VGA graphics mode, we can as well code a print function which takes an X coordinate which will be character column and row actually and not pixel column and row and the characters will be 8 by 8 pixels so uh, row 0 will start at pixel row 0 and row 1 will start at pixel row 9 or 8 if you start counting by by, by 0 uh, it will be pixel row 8 and thus forth. And we will also say, yeah, well, we take a color and we need some far point actually to a string. And we make this const so that we can't mutate that, and etc. etc. And we again need to have uh, registers to set for the BIOS. And as I said, there are two versions that we can do. We can first try to use the write string function. The write string function is 13 hex, and uh, we need to pick a write mode. And we will only put characters in there and not attributes because you can send out uh, interleaved characters and attributes. Attributes are stuff like color and blinking and underscoring of the characters and it will be uh, one character, like the C, and then a byte which says which color and blinking effects are there, and then will be the second uh, character, and so on and so on. But, um, yeah, we won't use that, so we will use just uh, write mode zero. Also, video page number will be zero in graphics mode, uh, attribute if mode zero or one, uh, yeah, because if we don't give the attribute per character, we need to put out the color here in register BL. And then the length of the string, which we can easily determine, and the row and columns X and Y. And then, here's the thing that breaks. We need to pass the pointer to the string, the far pointer, in the ES segment register and the base pointer BP. And my theory is that most probably the base pointer is overwritten by Turbo C before actually executing the interrupt. And then it points to garbage and it will read some code or stuff. Or maybe the stack, I don't know. Definitely something that is not from my program. And so we will see garbage. But let's try it anyway, shall we? So, um, the AX register has two fields. In the high byte, we will put the print string function, and since it's the high byte, we need to shift it left by 8 bits because the rec pack doesn't allow us to access the high and low byte independently. And in the low byte, we write the write mode, which is 0. So that's that. And now the BX register was supposed to be the video page number and the high byte, and the attribute if the mode is uh, 0 or 1. Okay, so we'll write a 0 in the high byte and color 15, which is white. In the low byte. You can also pick another color, E would be yellow, F is white, you can play around with that. Then DX also has high and low byte and that was row and column. Oh, let's do the CX first. Should be, should be more useful. Uh, so CX is uh, the string line which is just a C function to len, which returns the number of characters and it needs to have a zero terminated 
string. So uh, the strings in C will look like this, hello world, and then there will be a zero byte which you can write like this, backslash zero. And string length will count the number of characters until it encounters the first zero byte. Okay, dx is the column and row. The high byte will be the row, so the y coordinate. And this will be the x. That's already good. Then we need to fill the ES register and we take the macro far pointer segment. We take that off the string s. That's why we also definitely need a far pointer here, so we have both informations. Although I think maybe for near pointers it will use the data segment or stack segment, I have no clue. Maybe it's the same. And the base pointer will be the offset of the far pointer. All we have to do now is to call the interrupt, the video interrupt, and we'll pass it the registers. And now this should in theory work, but it probably won't. Let's put it in somewhere here um, in the handle game routine, in the new game. Uh, let's do it here. Just let's try to column and row zero, and color will be zero xf. Oh, we should have used color here, right? Ooh. We didn't do that, but it doesn't. It's 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 not it's not that bad. Color so better. Uh, here, here XF. Uh, what's the next thing? The pointer. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm not sure if we can use it like this because this will be a for something on the stack probably. But let's see what the compiler says. The compiler will say suspicious pointer conversion. This is a bad thing. And it doesn't, so that should be fine. L text, yeah, you see. We are definitely pointing somewhere in inside of our code data, I don't know what. Um, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work, but the string length worked because uh, we see there's a lot of characters printed. And hello world should fit in there definitely. So that doesn't work. Question is what does? And uh, what does work is printing character by character. So I leave that in here, but I put an if one else this preprocessor macro. So you can switch between both branches just by doing if zero, then this will run and if one then this will run. So instead we will use the function set cursor and write character. Uh, so we will iterate over all the rows of over all the columns and call this function here. Basically we need an iteration i equals zero i less than still len of s plus plus i, and then we will first set up the registers. ax contains simply set cursor shifted by 8 bytes and the low byte is 0. al is unused. bx simply contains 0. In both by whole hand low bytes, it's the page number or zero for graphics mode. And then very simple RDX is again Y in the high byte and X in the low byte. And then we can simply call the video interrupt. And this will advance the cursor on the screen. The cursor is invisible in graphics mode, so there's no blinking thing or anything, but this will simply work. And the next thing that we need to do is print 
a simple character, this is function 9, and in the low byte we pass the character to write, the display page, or in mode 13 background pixel value, that's very nice, and the character attribute foreground value in the low byte. So we could uh, actually do some background color, yeah, that's nice, didn't think of that. So rex r x equals set, oh look, that's the typo, set, no not set, print character in the high byte, the low byte is the character, that is s of i, and uh, the bx is, b high is the background pixel, mm, let use color one first to test and color as the foreground color whatever we passed from the calling function and cx is one we always print one character very nice Oh 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 oh! We only set the uh, we only set the cursor, but didn't call the interrupt. And run a D. Hmm. <laughs> That's not particularly useful. Okay, what did we do wrong? Who can see what we did wrong? Um, oh yes, of course. <laughs> uh, the Y stays the same, the X needs to be incremented. We just saw the hello world, and but only the D of the hello world. That's better. Okay, the background color doesn't look particularly impressive. I think that didn't work. Let's set it to 5 and see if that changes anything. No, it doesn't. I think uh, the DOS box ignores that, or this documentation is a bit incomplete. Let's just write it zero there. Shouldn't help. But fair enough, we can print. We can print stuff. And that's already a good thing. But this is not the score, right? So uh, let's put that in here in the handle game routine. Actually, we want to print something a little bit better. Um, uh, how do we do that? We will make a const character te a template, basically. And the template will look like this. Um, it will say player one has score something and in pr with printf you can actually write please print leading zeros that's what the zero is for and print up to three digits and it's supposed to be a decimal a number and then we need some spaces i don't know how many we'll figure that out and on the other side i'll make it mirror symmetric i'll say here player two Blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure if these are 40 characters, but we can test that. So this is what we can print, um, but this is only a template and we don't support the template here. So what we actually need to do is to print this to some string, which we pull out. And there's a string print function, which actually lets you... Um, oh, that's not quite correct which lets you print to the out string using a template string and two parameters and those parameters will be the player one score and the player two score you can look that up it's in the header file standard.io and here's the s printf sends formatted output to a string buffer format and then whatever arguments you need this looks good, but um, two things we need to define 
the out variable. And if we try this, if we just use um, character star out, and let's say we allocate 256 bytes, be careful, buffer overruns possible, and build this, and there will be warnings, two warnings. First of all, it says, oh, there's a suspicious pointer conversion here, because what SPNF doesn't say is it wants a far pointer here. And here as well, of course, because we defined it that way, that we want a far pointer. So that won't do. Instead, what we need to do is to malloc that stuff. And we want to do it only once, so we make a static variable, which we initialize with the null pointer. And only once, when we enter the function, if out equals null, you could also put it in here in the new game, but this is safer if we misuse the function and call it twice, we won't have any memory leaks. If out equals null, then we do out equals malloc 256 bytes, and that's it. Let's see if that will give us a far pointer. We of course have to declare it far, or if this will also throw a suspicious pointer conversion. Now that works, should be fine. A malloc, even if it does a near malloc, it will return a far pointer. And where's our printf? Exactly here. We will print the score once. Okay, we are up to date. Oh. Build again. Come on. Okay, this looks very good. Um, there's one, two, three, four characters missing, I think. So we put in more spaces here. Let's see, where is it? Up here. One, two, three, four. Now we should have a nice status bar at the top or score bar. Yeah, that's nice. Um, but the score doesn't increment, as you can see. But we already prepared for that. So we take this bunch and we put it in the regular handle game code as well. And we have this handle ball thing here. And we now say, um, uh, red val equals handleball. And if return value of, oh, is this actually what I want? Is this what I want? Is this what I want? Nope, 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 nope. I want a second return value. Uh, da, 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 da. Update score. Let's call it update score. If we are supposed to update the score, because we don't want to print all the time, the BIOS functions are. Uh, the BIOS functions are slow, and I just. No, I just moved it away. Ah, I'm so stupid. Yeah, here we are. Now we're at a post place. So, you don't want to um, print do this stuff in every frame. Uh, it's slow. Its BIOS functions are extremely slow. But only if the handleball routine says, yeah, there was a score update, then I want to print this stuff. So let's check if handleball actually can do that. Um, handleball is up here. It can't at the moment, so we will tell it, yeah, you return something. And you return some return value, and by default it's zero. Which means mm, there's nothing to do. And only if the score was incremented, I will say, yeah, okay. Uh, red val equals two. I don't know, maybe we don't need that, but I'll just... Uh, Return also which player had the score increased or incremented. Maybe you want to highlight it graphically or something. Here, player one had that, and then we say return that well. So that should already do the trick. Uh, down here, and we have the update score. We need to define it. We need to define update score. So int 
update score and let's initialize it with zero so we don't have any problems. Any errors? No, we are good. And now when the ball hits uh, the exit here we see that it increments and it will do so forever because we don't have any uh, endgame condition. So let's add that as well. We already defined the maximum score and we can do that actually near here I think and down here return red well. Let's do the following. If p1 score is greater or equal max score then we say return 1. Else if player 2 score is, has reached the maximum allowed score and then we say, well, also game over, return two. And if nothing of that is the case, we just say return our return value. And we return, return zero. I think we don't need the return value because um, if we hit escape, we return three already, like this, and we don't need the return value at all. All that's totally unnecessary so let's kick out this variable and this should have an endgame condition but the game will just quit so uh, let's quickly see score is one zero one one and when we hit five the game should automatically quit without fanfare it should just fade out four and last point, five. Yeah, it fades out and it's done. We could stop here, but I think it's nicer probably. Yeah, we could uh, stop here, but I think it's nicer if we have also some uh, handle game over routine that we can call. So uh, before doing the fade out, we would say here handle game over to present the players with something. And uh, let's call this winner or something. Um, this will be an int. In the beginning we have no winner. And uh, we need to call the handle game routine while winner equals zero. We'll do this thing and winner is handle game when we are in a normal game loop. Uh, one was in the start of the game and zero was in the middle of the game. So uh, we pass the winner instruction to the handle game over routine and what does it look like? It doesn't return anything. Handle game over and winner. Yeah, uh, we want to print just something and we need to ask the keyboard again for for uh, a key press before we exit. So we have a key code variable as usual and we have two end game strings. One will be a congratulation message, congratulations player one or two and we will have a second line which will always be printed even if you press escape something like press space to exit game this fits nicely will be very very nice and we'll also need to uh, print something Again, we need some static character far pointer out, which we'll initialize with null. It's our standard buffer for the printing. We could fold that to the um, print function, actually. That would be nicer, but I leave that task up to you. And 
Uh, we need to have some column where we print this. Uh, byte column equals. I already counted this, so we you don't have to. This will be eleven, and we want to have some fading effect. Um, but I'll add that later. So if the player number was less than three, we have a real winner. So we'll do the s printf of the uh, first condition as well. Uh, now this is called out. So we will use the end one thingy and say uh, winner. We call it winner here, right? Yeah. Player one and two. In my notes I wrote player, but this is called winner here. That's much nicer. And we'll print it out at 7.10. This is something that you just try out until it fits and looks nice. And this is the out string that we want to print, not the s string. And what we also always do is print the second line. And we actually don't need to put anything in there so it doesn't have any other parameter. And it will be just in the row below that. So row 11, same color, also the output buffer. And now what we'll do is do the keyboard loop and we will quit if the keyboard was hit. Then we'll do uh, the get character call, read the whatever we had, and very simple if the key code was simply the spacebar, oh, double equal sign, make no mistake, then we'll just break and the whole thing will exit. And to make it nicer we will do even a little bit of animation, uh, wait, retrace, wait, is it called like that? No, I think it's called wait for retrace. And we will Um, we'll actually do the following, yes, we will output here to the palette, palette right register, we would say uh, whatever color we got, and then we'll, I think there might be, there might be some bug here, but we'll, we'll, we'll probably encounter it, let's see. So we write to the palette right register and the color that we, we printed and we'll just output here some value i that we still need to define three times. So we'll make the, the white that we're printing with fade in and out. Um, but how does that work? So we need to definitely have some byte value here, i, which starts off at 63-ish or so. And um, does it? No, at zero. At start at zero. And some direction information, which will tell us are we making the color brighter or are we making it darker? So this will be one or minus one. And uh, we will simply increment i with this directional information. And if i becomes less than one, if we're on the way down, or if i becomes greater than 62, uh, then we'll invert the sign. So di will be minus di. So on our way up, when we hit the 63, we'll then start to subtract 1 until it hits 0, and then we'll go back up again. This should in theory work. Let's try to run it. A bunch of errors. Yes, 
some semicolons missing. And those are already all these things. Yeah, and look at that. When I now hit escape, we get the message, press space to exit the game. And um, other possibility is to just wait and oops, wait for the game end condition to arise, which takes a couple of seconds. I should have set it to like three or something to make it faster. But this should also quit and we should see a nice message. Congratulations, player one. Okay, we can put in an extra space there. But it fades in and out very nicely. And that's it, I would say. Um, what did we learn? We learned how to initialize the graphics mode, how to draw something on the screen, how to handle the keyboard, how to fade in and out stuff, how to animate things, how to keep track of game state. That was already quite a bunch. I mean, we produced a very simple game, but I think you can by now tell that uh, all the more complex games just add more stuff there, have more state, game state and stuff. And yeah, um, I hope this was instructional and you learned something. And please let me know in the comments what you want to learn about other than this. And uh, I would love to thank you for watching, for keeping um, with me during this whole kind of Let's Code event. And I certainly had fun making this. I had to dig out a lot of stuff that I already forgot. But I think, uh, yeah, we can take it further. We can, we can make even better stuff in the future. And I hope you return for the second season. Not sure when I'm gonna start that, but it will be definitely this year. Uh, when I have prepared some, some information here and there and tried out some stuff. So, thank you for watching, please share, like and definitely subscribe, there will be more videos coming and other than that, have a nice evening.